Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to install a GFCI downstream from a GFCI. So the first thing you want to do is turn off your uh, breaker to this outlet. So as you can see, I'm turning my water heater on and there's no power. You can also look at the light, so light isn't on as well. So it's how we know we're not, we don't have any power. Go ahead and take your cover off so it's two screws, top and bottom. And then there's two more screws to actually get the outlet out of the wall. So basically, this is in my bathroom and I want to install another GFCI in the garage. So I know this one is linked up. This is the first one upstream from the panel. So I'm just showing you. So I'm going to explain this whole mess of wires uh, in just a bit here. Um, so you can understand what exactly my particular scenario is and how this worked for me. So as you can see, the top is aligned, bottom is load. Like I said, I'll explain this uh, just a little bit and not as rushed. So this is what my box looks like in my uh, bathroom. And so basically this is the, the first uh, GFCI that's on this circuit. And so if we take a peek here, this sheath here is the power incoming from the breaker box. And these two sheaths here, this sheath in the front is going to the garage where I wanna put the other GFCI. And this sheath is going upstairs. So basically just right off the bat, when you look at this, you can already tell this is a daisy chain setup. Um, I'll mention what daisy chain is and pigtailing is in a second. So uh, if we go to the other picture here, uh, as mentioned, this is the power coming in. So this is the one that's in the front that is coming from the breaker box. So for GFCIs, always, always when the power is coming in, you want to use the line side. So you want to put in the white neutral on this side where it says white, um, but you can look at it where you see the silver screw here, that's the white or neutral, and the black or the hot, as you can see black here, goes on the brass side. Uh, that's where you wanna link it up. So I'm back wiring both of these, and then of course you wanna put your ground here at the bottom. So another way you can tell that this is a, pig, is a uh, daisy chain is that you've got power coming in and power going out. So the other two sheaths are linked up here, Again, ingoing, incoming power from the box, and this is outgoing power to other places. So this is gonna power the other GFCI that I wanna put in in the garage and all the other circuits that are downstream upstairs. Uh, one other note too is if you do need to strip wire, you can see this here, this is the length that you should strip the wire, uh, sorry, strip the insulation off the wire um, to either back wire or side wire here. Um, and if you side wire, just do your shepherd's hook. You can use your tool and bend it or just use a uh, plier and just twist it. Uh, just make a, a low hook and then you can hook it up under the screw. So why well, I want to mention daisy, daisy chaining and pigtailing is they are actually two separate things. So you want to daisy chain if you have one GSCI like this and multiple just regular standard outlets downstream. Um, because basically what happens is if this pops, then the entire circuit downstream goes. Um, and that's what you want, basically, on a daisy chain. Base and then, you know, all you need to do is just reset this one and you're good to go. And the entire uh, circuit downstream is good. Uh, another, re another way you can tell is if you, well, I've kind of already mentioned this, that there's going to be a ton of wires in the box. Um, and it's going to look like this. So if you were to pigtail... Let me show you what that looks like. This is what pigtailing looks like. And if you were to pigtail, if we were to look in our box, so if we go back here and you look at the box, the box would have a lot of wire nuts in it. And basically you would have just three wires coming out, which would be the black, white, and the ground with wire nuts in here. If we go back to the pigtailing. So the way it's different is you've got your source cable here. So this is coming from the box but you can think of this cable as running all the way down the circuit and you've just got pigtails at each outlet that you've got. And so what that means is basically these outlets are gonna run in parallel. And so if let's say this one pops for some reason, then this one will still be working because it's all running off this cable here, all from the breaker box. So with the breaker isn't flipping, just this one receptacle or outlet is flipping. So this one will still be working. So that's also a difference in the daisy chain is basically on the daisy chain. 
each receptacle or outlet is actually powering the next one down. Um, and so basically that means that they run in series is what it's called. So if one pops, so let's say this one pops, all the rest of the outlets downstream will also not work because each, they're like I said, they're going in series and they're being powered. Each receptacle is being powered by the next one that's upstream rather than the breaker box. Um, so here, rather than the actual one wire from the breaker box powering everything. And so that's the, the difference between daisy chaining and pigtailing. So now we've got all that through, go ahead and go to your uh, breaker or your outlet in the garage, double make sure that there's no power to it. So put your black in the ground and then your red into the hot wire, the right side. So we verify there's no power, go ahead and take the cover off this one. You know, I wanted to change this one even though it's GFCI protected because it's ancient and uh, it's also backstab, which I'll show you in a second. So go ahead and take the two screws out to get the outlet out of the wall. And this is what I'm talking about. So this is the old school way, uh, backstabbing the wires into the outlet, which isn't really that safe anymore. So I wanted to, that's another reason why I wanted to change it. So if you take your small flathead screwdriver, there's little slots right under the wire you can push, and then the wire should come out if you pull them. So take the two, the hot black and the white neutral out, go ahead and take your ground off and then it's just a replacement. So because the power is coming into this GFCI, we want to put the black and the white into the line side. Don't touch the load side because this is the last outlet downstream. So that's why there's that yellow sticker there. So we're gonna use only the line side. So you can, so the new way is you can kind of, it's called backstabbing still, but you can put it into the side just like this. And then you can use a, there's a plate there and you can use the screw to screw it in so that way it's secured and it's not gonna pop out like the old school backstab way where you literally stick it into the back of the outlet. So put your white on the silver screw, screw that in, the black on the brass screw on the other side and screw that in. Make sure these are tight too. So you wanna actually, I'll show you in a second, but you wanna actually pull them, make sure they don't come out. Little finger test right about here after this. So finger test, make sure those don't come out. And then go ahead and put your ground on the bottom, same thing, tie, uh, screw it in and do the finger test to make sure it doesn't pop out uh, with your shepherd's hook. So you can also do that with the other ones as well. If you wanna shepherd hook it um, and then screw it onto the, under the screw, you can do that as well. They're, both ways are fine. And you can do that with your wire cutter tool. You put it in one of the holes and twist it, or you can just use pliers and make a little hook. Uh, either way is fine. And all you need to do is put the outlet back into the box here. Screw those in. And then what we want to do is these outlets come from the factory shipped in a tripped uh, manner. So basically you want to untrip it to test it. So you can't just plug something in and have it work. So once you've screwed it in, plug something into it. So in this case, it's my surge protector. Turn the surge protector on and then basically turn your power back on from a breaker, push the test button and then push the reset button all the way in. And as you can see, the uh, green light at the bottom turns on. You can see the search, search protector turned on so we know that we're good and we have power. Turn off your power again and then put your cover plate back on and then you're done. And then just don't forget to turn your, your breaker back on to this circuit and you've put a GFCI downstream from a GFCI. So hope this video helped.